Welcome everyone to a new episode of On The Rise. My name is Vishal Yadish. On The Rise features top tier founders and innovators to talk about their journeys and motivations to help inspire the next generation of leaders. Today we're joined by Abhinav Komala. Abhinav is a machine learning researcher and a current student at the MET program at UC Berkeley. He's won numerous math and computer science competitions and reached the platinum division of the United States Computing Olympiad, the competition's highest division. Hi, Abhinav. Thanks again for joining us today. Hi, Vishal. Thank you for having me. Let's dive right in. Would you mind sharing more about your background? Yeah. Uh, so I think a lot of my high school background uh, was centered around uh, competitive programming. And I think in the later stages of high school, I realized that I also wanted to focus on uh, like other avenues for like CS that were more uh, more hands-on and could have like more real world impact. And so that's what kind of led me towards research. Uh, and so I think a combination of those two is really who, what made me who I am right now. And uh, I think I've realized like later on that I wanted to study business on top of uh, CS because one of my goals is to build products that can, you know, help my community. And uh, to do so, it's not just having like a background, having a background in CS is nice, but you need to be able to understand like how to market those products and have so that they can have like economic value. And so uh, that's how like applying to the MET program came into picture. And that's eventually what led me to apply. And surprisingly, I was able to get in. Yeah. So going back a little bit, when did you get started with competitive programming? Yeah, so I think I started uh, late in my ninth grade. And what motivated me to start was because of my friends and they were all doing it. And I thought at the time that problem solving was like it was something I enjoyed doing in my free time. So I, I thought I'd give it a shot. And obviously you reached high accolades with both USACO as well as numerous other competitions. So how much time did you put into competitive programming prep and learning the necessary concepts, particularly early on? So early on, I think I spent uh, three to four hours like a day on uh, competitive programming and Olympiads because uh, I didn't really come from a background of like participating in the Olympiads. I think USACO was the first like real competition I started preparing for. And so I had to spend more time than I think most people to like get good at this since I didn't really have a strong problem solving like background. And so, yeah, I think in general, if you've already done Olympiads, it's a bit less time. You don't need to spend three to four hours a day, but I, I enjoyed it practicing because I thought it was really fun to practice all these problems. And it was really satisfying when all the pieces came together and your hard work uh, lead you towards a nice solution. So uh, yeah, that's what kind of led me to spend that much more time. And as you know, the first Yusako contest weekend was a few weeks ago. What practice strategies and or resources would you recommend to high school students going through the program right now? Yeah, I would highly recommend, I think the first thing is you should read every single question. Cause I think I know a lot of people who realize that they could solve some of the questions in the contest, but they, either were not able to because they spent too much time on one of them. And as a result, they didn't uh, allocate enough energy for the other questions or because they simply didn't allocate enough time. Uh, so they didn't allocate their time properly. Like for example, assigning like an hour to each question uh, and then maybe like implementation for uh, debugging. So yeah, definitely reading all the questions so that you have like of you so that you're sure that you can maximize your score uh, in the contest is something I'd like tell people to do. Mm -hmm. And what sort of resources would you recommend to students? I think the training pages that uh, is on the Usico website is a really nice resource. Uh, I, I highly recommend, especially the first three chapters, because if you're new to this competitive programming, those three chapters are like really well written for like introduct, like for people who are just starting. Um, I think the later stages can be a bit more challenging, and I would, in, I, I, once you reach that point, I would recommend uh, practicing through the past contests that are listed on the website and solving through all those questions. Uh, and I would also recommend Code Forces, which is an online platform with these curated questions and online contests so that you can have like a better feel for uh, the competition environment and best prepare yourself for upcoming contests. And you talked about earlier how your goal was to develop real world practice applications that people that have value to your customers. 
How did your experience with USACO and competitive programming contribute to real world programming experiences, such as your research and engineering positions? Yeah, so I think once I, I had like an internship at a local startup called Nero uh, over the summer. And over there, I realized like very quickly that um, I did a lot of the background needed to build these products isn't necessarily in like the algorithmic development. It's more of you understanding like the language or you having experience with like perhaps full stack development, uh, ML or whatnot. And this was like stuff I didn't really, un like stuff I didn't have experience with. And so that's what really motivated me to study uh, other fields besides just like competitive programming. And I think at that time, I was hard for me to transition immediately from algorithms to uh, other aspects of CS. And that might include like web development, uh, app development, et cetera. And so I think the closest thing that I could get to that uh, was pretty technical, but also it could have like tangible impacts in the real world was research. And so that's what motivated me to apply for research positions. Uh, during my junior and senior years in high school. Mm -hmm. And would you mind elaborating a little bit more about the context of your research and some of the things that you did? Yeah, so in my 11th grade, I participated in two uh, different research internships. One was with uh, the Department of Defense, and I worked as like a cybersecurity intern. And so the context of the program is it's called HSAP. So it's for high school students who are interested in picking up a new field. And so for me, that new field was cybersecurity. I had like literally no experience uh, entering the internship, but I guess they thought that I had some solid problem solving experience through these algorithm contests. And so they gave me a shot and working there, they had like this nice like set of resources that I would like work through to hone my cybersecurity like skills. And then in the later half of the program, I would uh, apply those skills in order to conduct a real life research project that I was going to be directing myself. And then obviously along with their mentorship. And so by the end of it, it accumulated in me uh, working on uh, cloud security and specifically with Docker containers. And so by, I was able to prove pragmatically that not only that security vulnerabilities exist. And so essentially like me proving that shared memory and shared networking were security threats, but I was also able to propose a uh, machine learning algorithm to mitigate those threats, which was eventually published by IEEE. Uh, and then my second research internship was with UCSF. Uh, there, it was more of me helping with their projects rather than me like coming up with directed self-research. And so I was helping with their uh, database searching uh, projects. And essentially their project was to create a database where that stores like molecular data. And depending on like substructure or substructure queries, which can be useful for uh, drug uh, sequencing, um, they needed help with like optimizing those processes. And because like initially it was almost like 10 to 15 minutes to search for a single molecule to the entire database because it had almost like 500 million to a billion molecules. And you have to keep in mind that these molecules are like pretty long strings because they can get very complicated, uh, especially for pharmaceutical research. And so uh, by the end of it, I was able to reduce that time to almost like 100 to 130 seconds. So yeah, I, th I'd, I think both experiences are very useful because uh, it really like widened my, broadened my understanding of how research works and like how working as like, how, like exactly how, yeah, exactly how research works. And also I think it motivated me to be more humble because entering those internships, I had literally no experience and it was definitely a challenge in the beginning to uh, get the necessary background to do well as in a position that I was in. Um, but over time, as I learned to talk to my mentors and uh, learn a lot from them, I've become to appreciate like uh, the power of like teamwork in order to overcome such challenges. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. And going back to how you describe using machine learning for medicine, we see now that deep learning is seeing new applications in a variety of fields, medicine, self-driving cars, energy, even mathematics. What applications based on your research do you see achieving more traction or seeing more innovation in the next several years? Uh, I believe uh, self-driving cars have made like, like deep learning for that application has made like significant progress, especially with like Tesla and other, uh, I think even Waymo, the Google division has made like significant progress. So I'd imagine that that sector is going to see more innovation. Um, from my experience uh, for deep learning research, uh, I'm like in at Berkeley, uh, it seems like the applications are pretty limited at the moment because they're simply not powerful enough to be as accurate as a human or as accurate as uh, 
current like uh models that aren't necessarily like machine learning based that they are just based off of like a sequence like a sequence of steps or essentially just another algorithm so i'd imagine that the applications for deep learning are going to take more time to it's going to take time for those applications to be more applicable uh in the real world uh, but obviously i'm not like extremely extremely experienced in this this is something i'm still learning um yeah but that's my two cents on that topic and what are your plans going forward you're part of the management entrepreneurship and technology program at Berkeley. Are you thinking of starting your own startup someday? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think my career paths have like entering this program. I thought that's what I wanted to do. But when I talked to the upperclassmen and like the staff at MET, it seems like there's so many like cool career paths to pursue that could be, that can make me, that would make me feel fulfilled and would keep me like extremely like intellectually stimulated. And so I think other fields I'm considering is perhaps like working in finance or even working as a PM for uh, a more technical role. So for example, working as a TPM in uh, Google AI seems like a really cool uh, role to pursue. Um, but obviously these are all just hypothetical. I, have, I really have no idea what's gonna happen in the future. Um, I'm just planning to learn as much as possible and I'll see what happens. All set. So to close this out, one final question. What advice would you give to aspiring engineers and software developers? Yeah, I highly recommend. Uh, I think the biggest advice I'd give them is to not feel like they're constrained to a certain role. Like if you're interested in software development, you shouldn't feel like that your only role is to write code and then deliver it to your manager, right? If you're more interested in like the people aspect of things, you should try as like fast as possible to uh, perhaps like if you're if you've already finished college, uh, maybe pursue an MBA or if you're still a high school student, um, you can think about you can like at least if you're not interested in taking business courses, you should try to form a cohesive like like a picture of yourself and where you can see yourself in the future building like a company around this. And you, at least when you're like applying to like these programs, I would highly recommend uh writing about like what your future aspirations are and be very specific about how you're going to achieve that, such goals. So yeah, just don't feel constrained to uh, what you're currently given. And I think that you given enough effort and given enough like ingenuity and like your certain, like your strategies on like moving forward, you'll be able to transition to whatever role you want to. Um, because I think that's something that like I felt in high school, like I felt I was pretty constrained to working only in software development because most of my activities in high school are like technically driven. Um, but there are always ways to change that. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you so much, Abhinav, for your time. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for having me here. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Stay tuned for my next episode and see you all soon. Bye.